Welcome back. Call of the Lady. This is our uh, guest, is Archbishop Ovi Cruz. We're reading his book. It's his address to give you hope uh, and to uh, give you optimism as you begin to understand what is your lay identity. Then you'll understand your call and your responsibilities. And uh, very powerful. You are, uh, as lay men, lay women, and lay youth, high dignity, great dignity. Let's begin with a little prayer here. And uh, come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy his consolations through Christ our Lord. Amen. All right, let's go to our assigned page here. And again, we're going to call the laity. We're unbundling Canon 204 um, because it's part of the mindset of the church and it's giving us an identity of who we are. And it says Christ faithful, and that's who you are. You're part of Christ faithful as a lady, are those who, who since they are incorporated into Christ through baptism, we're talking about baptism. Page 17, and we'll see what baptism continues on for us. And uh, and we started, we left off at the other at the tape before about this, uh, the newness of the person is possible in the Holy Spirit. Humanity has was long blinded by original sin. Original sin is a stain on the intellect and a stain on the will. The stain on the intellect is what you and I know as ignorance. The stain on the will is what you and I know as an inclination towards evil. Okay? So, uh, he, he says here, it's long been bl long blinded by original sin. It made men and women lose their way to their assigned destiny. Thus, they needed a guiding light, an inspiring grace, and a salvific force for them to find once again the right way. Know the eternal truth and have everlasting life. All these, and now we continue on 17. That gives you some context. All these became a reality, uh, be, became a real possibility through the intervention of the Holy Spirit. That's that procession from the Godhead, that procession of, uh, uh, of charity, love. Intervention of the Holy Spirit. All these eventually turned into the actuality for all those members of humanity who became believers, who were baptized, and who were thereby be, who thereby became new persons in the Holy Spirit. The newness of the person is true with the Son. When men and women become a new creation before the Father and in the Holy Spirit, it is with the accompaniment of the Son. And what is the Son? Truth. What are his, uh, those who are ordained, deacons, priests, bishops? They are to preach the truth and they are to administer the sacraments and govern with justice. So the accompaniment of the Son. The truth is that created by the Father and enlightened by the Holy Spirit. The sacrament of baptism cleanses people from their original sinful stain through the redeeming grace won by Christ through his incarnation as the Son of the Father by the intervention of the Holy Spirit. In other words, it is both supernatural truth and a historical fact that men and women become new persons with the Son as the incarnate Christ, who still heads and leads them in their ongoing pilgrimage to the eternal kingdom of the Father. And upon death you can say, I go to the Father's house, along with the great Saint John Paul II. Look that up. That's what he said. And I think there's a book on it by George Weigel, maybe. I go to the Father's house. Okay, Very powerful about baptism. Very powerful when you understand uh, our Father, uh, a loving Father, and, uh, and what's going on here. All for your happiness. All for your, uh, your goodness. Okay. Now we'll consider we'll we'll handle this number four in another tape seventeen dash one. I'd like to keep with just one concept here, three tapes on baptism. Just basic inter introduction. What it, I'd like you to know from this is that baptism is part of your incorporation into uh, into the uh, into the Christian faithful. There are some beautiful dignities that result. You're equal in dignity. 
with everyone else, with the Pope, with bishops, priests, and deacons. And, uh, and, and so that's, and I was taught, and this is the foundation, this baptism, of why I was taught that it was the teaching of John Paul II, the great Saint John Paul II, and I can't give you the citation right now. I'll tell you what my take on that is. The universal call to holiness. Holiness is to the soul what blossoming is to the rose. And we are of equal dignity. And there's this concept in philosophy and theology of distinction. What distinguishes us one from another? And, and in the church, John Paul II approached it from a different angle. He said it's more important to be holy than it is to be a bishop, even the bishop of Rome. It's more important to be holy than it is to be a bishop, even the bishop of Rome. Now, I digress a little bit further. Let's jump over to Thomas Aquinas on his teachings on the angels. Because the first thing we can say, remember this concept of distinction. The first thing we can say when God created and we observe, they, the philosophers and the theologians say, there's a distinction in creation. And for our purpose, that distinction is angels and man, women, and youth. Well, what do they mean? We learn much about our God by looking at his works. And when we see the angels, what distinguishes one angel from another? There are nine choirs. Because we're going to learn about our distinctions between one, each, and every one of us. So, again, we are equal in dignity. But I want to submit to you, I want to suggest to you, the distinction for us is in our ability, our capacity for service. How do you increase your capacity for service? By becoming holy. What does holiness mean in terms of mystical theology? Holiness means that you are a great capacity to do the will of the Father. That's why Mary said, I come as the handmaid of the Lord to do your will. And you are like wax that can be melted and formed by the Father. You are oriented towards his will. You're a pencil in his hand. You're a capacity and God will flow through you. He needs that in order to have uh, to help orient and administer in this world creation towards him. Now look at the angels. What, what makes a difference between an angel, an archangel, thrones and principalities? What makes a difference between uh, uh, the seraph and the cherub? The cherub and the seraph. The seraph is the, the top. Well, ask yourself, first of all, <clears throat> what are the operations? What's the daily job of an angel? The job is to, of the angel is to know and to love. Just like the processions going back to the Father, the Godhead, there's two processions, knowing and loving. The knowing is Jesus Christ, the, the truth. The loving is the charity of the Holy Spirit. Angels are constantly knowing and loving. That's their capacity. Where does an angel exist? It exists where it operates, where it's knowing and loving. What are the distinctions between angels? The distinctions are their capacity to serve, their capacity to know and to love. When we look at the, the, the I would su suggest, submit to you, when you look at Thomas Aquinas on those angels, look at the seraph and the cheru uh, cherub. The seraph is at the height. This is important for you lay people. Very important. Underline this. I'll, I should do a, a separate tape on this. Underline this. Think, hold your two hands out, and, and, and if you hold them out, I'm going to show you here in this tape here. And you extend them. If there's been no injury, your hand sh and arm should meet like this. Equal. Okay? That's representing the wings of the angel, the loving, and the knowing. They're equal. In the cheru, they're equal. Well, what would distinguish the seraph? The seraphs, uh, so the cherub loves what it knows. It's knowing and loving are equal. It loves what it knows. Well, what about the seraph? The seraph's loving exceeds its knowing. That's powerful. It's not a defect. It loves, exceeds its knowing. And what did Mary do? I know not the way. She constantly loving beyond understanding. You lay, folks, you don't have the degrees. You're in Learner Church. You're not going to have all the theological philosophy, philosophical degrees. But imitate the seraphs. Love beyond your understanding. Love beyond your knowledge. It's an act of faith. You're allowed to do that. That will unbundle, and give me comments here if you want to know more about that. That's an entire 
I can spend some time on that, okay? I digress, but I want to let you know there is much in this baptism. There's much that Father Cruz, he's a pastor. Although he's an archbishop, he managed deacons, priests, and bishops. He is ultimately a pastor, pastoring people to eternal life. And when he's talking, his address is to make to bring you hope and optimism that you have an identity in the church that can't be taken from you, that you have a purpose that can't be taken from you, that you have uh, duties and responsibilities beyond your identity, you have duties and responsibilities, but you have rights too. The right to exist, the right to love, the right to know the truth, okay? That all comes from this baptism. Remember, I leave you with that thought. It's more important to be holy than it is to be a bishop, even the bishop of Rome. John Paul II. All right, thank you. Keep me in your thoughts and prayers as we progress through this.